Hi folks, this is Bob Burns speaking. I kind of collect masks and stuff and have done a few gorilla things and masks. Anyway, I want you to watch Dr. Gangrene on Chiller Cinema. One of the greatest shows you'll ever see, and it might scare you half to death. I've seen some of the dead bodies he's got around here, and they're real. They're not phony, they're real. They're starting to smell a little, too, i got to tell you. Don't miss this show. If you do, he'll probably come after you. See it. to you from Monster Bash here in northern Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I pulled aside a special guest here. Uh, he doesn't look quite too uh, happy here. Uh, how you doing this evening, Frankie? Ah, uh, Monster Bash! <laughs> Come with me and we'll look around, if you dare, if you scare. <laughs> We're here with another guest from Monster Bash 2002. This is Carrie Gamble, artist extraordinaire. How you doing, Carrie? Fine. How are you, Doctor? Doing great. Great. So that's I will. Pain here is when you get time. Uh, that, well, that's know. okay. I do make house calls, so we'll we'll look at that here. <laughs> now, my uh, methods are a bit unorthodox, a little experimental, but all right, that's fine. As long as you're cheap. Well, yeah, but you might grow a second head or something like that. But uh, hey. Right. You know, you gotta expect these things. Yeah, eyes in the back of your head. You know, you can get more done that way. All right, great. Yeah, you draw twice as many things. Dude. That's right. Uh, extra arm. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, Thanks. extra appendage. Hey, I wanted to ask you about a couple of things. First, tell my viewers a little bit about um, your career drawing over the years. 
Uh, well, I started drawing comic books uh, in uh, the late 70s uh, for Marvel Comics. Uh, I grew up reading Creepy Magazine and, and uh, between horror and, and superhero stuff, you know, I was interested in all that kind of stuff. So I got into superhero comics for a long time. Uh, drew some Spider-Man, Superman, X-Men, things like that. Uh, then I moved into uh, movies for a while. I actually got to do some monster work then. Did designs for aliens uh, and monsters for various uh, TV and movies. Yeah. And, uh, well, we interviewed Bernie Wrightson a while back, and he's done a little bit of that kind of work yeah, also. Yeah, he has. He's yeah. great. Yeah. So, uh, and Who are some of your influences uh, for comics? Uh, some of my favorite artists are like uh, Jack Kirby, John Buscema. The king. Uh, it's Buscema. Right. John is amazing. All those people from the late 60s at Marvel, Steranko, uh, Romita. Romita, Gene Colan, yeah. all those kind of guys. Frank Frazetta's covers on Creepy Magazine were like some of my earliest, you know, just sure. big inspirations. Yeah, I uh, bought a Molly Hatchet album as a kid just for the Frazetta cover, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those creepy things and the Conan books and all those kind of fantasy and science fiction things. I just ate them up when I was a kid. And so right. I love any time I get a chance to do something like that. It's great. You're also a horror host fan. As a matter of fact, I know a little bit of history <laughs> on Mr. Gamble here because you were involved in a horror host program down in Texas, weren't you? That's right. Uh, I grew up on the shock theater days in the, in the early 60s. We had a local host uh, named Gorgon. Uh, it was on the Channel 11 in Fort Worth. Uh, and he went off the air in the mid-60s. And in the early 70s, a show came on called The Museum of Horrors. And it was on Channel 5 and showed pretty bad movies. But they had a new horror host in town, and he was he was pretty interesting. And uh, we had a mutual friend, so he introduced me to him. Uh, his name is Greg Bransom. He played a guy named Professor Cerberus, uh, the curator of the Museum of Horrors. Uh -huh. And once we met, uh, we hit it off right away, because he was a big monster fan, grew up on Nightmare like I did. Nightmare was Gorgon's show. And uh, so pretty soon I was going down every week to the station to help him out, and, and uh, I became sort of the sidekick, the uh, Igor character. Yeah. What did you have? Were you, were you Igor? Right. We we kept coming up with different names, but we kept going back to Igor. It just fit, you know. Sure. So I did this hunchback assistant, and it, I did lots of other characters, you know. Whenever we and the illustrations and stuff for right, for t-shirts and such. Right. I did the t-shirts and posters and things like that. Yeah. And it ran for about two and a half years. And I've uh, seen it in Elena Watson's horror host book. Uh, got the picture right. of your t-shirt in there. Right. She gave us a lot of great coverage in that. And. Uh, we did a lot of live shows and you know midnight movies and things. Just had tons of fun for for you know two and a half three years with it. It was great. great. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know a lot of it was live TV. Even even in the 70s, the station just did some of it live, and and so uh, it was you know a lot of seat of your pants kind of stuff. You know, but yeah. uh, just whatever we could come up with at the spur of the moment. So what were the years you were doing this? It was uh, probably between 74 and 76 in, yeah. in that era. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, you don't have any of it on videotape, do you? No, the station didn't keep anything. They just they, they'd erase the tape the next week, you know, record over it or use right. it for commercials or something. Our uh, local host was Sir Cecil Creep, and unfortunately none of his um, shows survived either because yeah. those were the days, the pre-video. Right. I, I saw him. I guess the Nashville Network ran that show, yeah, didn't they? a few they? years later so on I the guess, Nashville Network. So somebody probably had some. He of was the Phantom of the Opry at that time. Time. I actually have some of those on tape. I'll hook you up with some of those okay. if, if you're interested. Yeah, and our show was unfortunately before home video, so you know we can't find anybody that kept them. Yeah, but uh, we have you know photos and things like that. So. Now, Carrie's also running a great website called Monster Kid. Tell them the the address and a little bit about it. All right, Monster Kid Online Magazine. Uh, the web address is monster-kid.com. Or you can just look us on Google for Monster Kid Magazine, you'll find it. Uh, it's kind of inspired by famous monsters, and just uh, I try to have fun with it, uh, with graphics, uh, you know, what, what I know about web design and stuff. I'm just kind of playing around. Listen, he's being far too humble. Carrie's website is awesome. It's everything that Famous Monsters Magazine used to be, except it's online. It's got his great sense of design. It's got some great writing by Tom Weaver and some other people, right? That's right. Bill Warren, uh, some other professional writers uh, contributing things. Do interviews with... with with the horror star, they'll get a Peggy Moran interview from The Mummy's Hand. Got Ben Chapman coming up in the next next issue, talking about his Abbott and Costello uh, live TV appearance. Excellent, and even a horror host article, right? 
That's right. I did one about Gorgon, the, the original host in Dallas-Fort Worth in the last issue that I spent way too much time on, but I just had to get all my old memories out there. <laughs> had to do it. Right. Bill's son, uh, Bill passed away about 10 years ago, but his son, Bill Canfield was the name of the, the host. Uh, his son has all the material that the TV station gave to him and his dad kept. Uh, it was great for me to be able to go through all that stuff and just relive that. And he had yeah. some videotape that I didn't know existed. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, go to Monster Kid uh, to see the article about him. I'm yeah. sure you enjoy it. And show him your book real quick before we wrap this up. This is uh, a book of my the work that I did in comics and in movies called Carrie Gamble's Drawing Monsters and Heroes for comics and film. Covers uh, work from comic book, superheroes, uh, like monster designs that I did for uh, special effects studios. Uh, and you can pick it up at uh, Borders Books or, or Amazon.com has it. Or you can go to my website and find it. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you spending some time with me, Kerry. All right. You have a good day. Stay mad. And as a matter of fact, uh, come see me at my table in a little while, and we'll take care of that extra arm for you. All right. Great. All right. Say, I think you're a swell person. Hmm? You're very beautiful. So beautiful, I'm going to make you immortal. Hey, where's uh, the girl? Well, you'll never see her again. I'll give you a treat to tell me where she is. I'm not kidding. If you were to kill me, you're leaving at large a monster that only I can control. still here at Monster Bash 2002 and I have Dennis Drug Tennis, the publisher of Scary Monsters magazine here. How you doing Dennis? Hi doctor. Man, it's great to meet you finally. It's great to meet you too. Live, if you're alive. I don't know if you're alive or... Live and undead as I like okay. to say. Undead. Oh, we got a cable problem here. Oh, hang on a second. Uh -oh. Uh oh. Flip it around. Flip it around. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you know, these uh, modern uh, technological devices, you know how it is. It can be a problem sometimes. But uh, anyway, well, live, live and undead here at Scary at uh, Monster Bash 2002. And, you know, Dennis and I have been talking for quite a bit on the Internet. Uh, he published that great article on us in Scary Monsters, which we appreciate. Right. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Here it is, in fact. He even did a limited edition run of Dr. Gangrene uh, magazines there. So, uh, how's things been going for your magazine? Good, fine. You just did a Monster Bash special issue, didn't you? Yes, just came out here at the show. Right here. Which issue number is that? 43. Number 43. Now, how often do you publish this magazine? It comes out quarterly yeah. and with one yearbook, so five times a year. Yeah, and you, but you do some other magazines too, don't you? Sure. Castle of Frankenstein, Journal of Frankenstein, New Adventures of Frankenstein. <laughs> You like Frankenstein, don't yeah. you? <laughs> As a matter of fact, a little known fact, Dennis here actually collects Frankenstein novels. So any of you out there that have any novels you want to uh, sling his way, I'm sure Dennis will be happy to take them off your hands. I sure will. Yeah. And so publishing all these magazines, I bet you probably have quite a few uh, 
back stock magazines laying around, don't you? Yeah, boxes? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, where do you store them all? Probably half a garage full. Uh, yeah. Well, so that you just need to come to shows like this and sell them all, right? Right. Or sell yeah. them through the mail or internet and yeah, things like that. What, do you have a website that my viewers can come check out your magazine at? Yes. Uh, www.scarymonstersmag.com. Okay. That's great. Scarymonstersmag.com. There's a link from Chiller Cinema, my website also. So come by there and you can find Dennis and Scary Monsters through there also. So upcoming issues, any articles in mind? Any themes you know you're going to hit on? Uh, well, number 44 is going to be kind of a mask-related uh, issue with a lot of scary masks. Unknown scary mask, mask yeah. shock monster, and teenage monster, oh, and uh, <laughs> things like this. You can see that. Yeah, see a schlock monster, a scary horror monster, a teenage monster. Oh, that's fun. Now, speaking of masks, I saw Bob Burns' original Frankenstein head application over there in the uh, other guest room. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I, I haven't even seen it yet. Oh, you got to get over there. Tear yourself away from here. I'll watch the desk here for a minute. Trust me. I won't pocket anything. I, have, I don't know much. if you brought, I haven't even seen uh, Glenn Strange's boots. I don't know if he brought those along this year. I know he had them last year. I, saw them I look a little year. taller than usual, huh? Oh. There they are. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, I haven't seen the boots either. I don't know if he brought them either. Well, hey, Dennis, it's great spending some time with All you, right. buddy. I appreciate it. And as a matter of fact, this, where'd he go? This here is this Dennis's is son. Scare. Come here, Sam Scare. This is the <laughs> son of Dennis here. We got to get him in on this, too. You like horror? Yes. Who's your favorite monster? <laughs> Wolfman, Frank Stein, Gilman. Who you like? Wolfman. Wolfman, there you go. Can you howl for me? <laughs> nah, you ain't gonna do it. That's okay. I won't make him. Hey, Dennis, once again, it's great, right. and I'll, I'll be in touch with you soon. Okay. Okay. Beaten by a werewolf and lives, becomes a werewolf himself. Oh, don't hand me that. You're just wasting your time. The wolf beat you, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. You wouldn't want to run away with a murderer, would you? Oh, Larry, you're not. You know you're not. I killed Bela. I killed Richardson. If I stay here any longer, you can't tell who'll be next. fans, I want to tell you about the Zachary Scrapbook. This is a great book written by John Scareshock. It's an in-depth look at Zachary, the first and greatest horror host of all time, Transylvania's cool ghoul. This features great articles, behind the scenes stories, and tons of photos. John is also a writer for Scary Monsters Magazine, which is where you can pick up a copy of this book if you're interested. Check it out.
Fright fans, we're back here at the horror, f uh, horror. Where the heck are we? We're at Monster Bash 2002. Yeah, that's it. I don't know where we are because I'm here with Bob Burns, the famous Bob Burns. How you doing, Howdy, sir? Bob? I'm doing fine, sir. Fine. Just, Bob, I, this is the greatest show ever. Are you having a good time this week? Oh, Monster Bash. This is the only place to go. You know, Bob and I were hanging out at the old dark clubhouse upstairs earlier. Oh, last night, late last night. A little too late, probably. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. A little too late and a little too early this morning, but uh, <laughs> oh, no. we had a great time watching some old uh, home movies. That some people had brought. Best stuff ever, man. I mean, you know, you talk about monster kids. It's all there. The feeling. Ah, it, this you like that term, monster kids? I love the term. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just like the older monster kid. That's all. You know, <laughs> I was kind of there when it started. And the biggest kid of all. And speaking of there when it started, you were, you really were. You were uh, made appearances in some movies, didn't you? Yep. Yeah, sure did. Yeah, I worked with Paul Blaisdell, who I think is one of the best monster maker guys around. You know, She Creature, Conquer the World, Invasion of the Saucer Man, all that stuff. I mean, he was a great guy. I was just very lucky to know him and, and be able to assist him. And then later on, I went into my gorilla stuff and did the original Ghostbusters with Forrest Tucker and Larry Storch, and that was a lot of fun. Bob built some fantastic gorilla outfits. There's a great article in the last, not the latest, but the next to latest issue of uh, Monsters from the Vault, all about Charlie Gamora, who was your hero. Greatest, greatest gorilla guy there ever was. He was. I mean, there are a lot of gorilla guys, and they're all pretty good, but he was the he was the best. You know, king of the gorillas. The king of the, he was the gorilla god. That's gorilla all there is. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yep, he's one. Yeah, let's see. Well, they're going to pull out the monsters from the vault uh, yeah. issue here in a second. But, uh, yeah, but I brought some of my, uh, since this was Abbott and Costello tribute, I brought some of the things like Abbott and Costello Meet the Mummy. And well, well, tell my viewers a little bit about it. These are original pieces. Yeah, here. this is out of the original mold here. And uh, over there, that's the original Glenn Strange headpiece and uh, Mr. Hyde mask and a Wolfman nose here. We're just all kinds of stuff. And it was here. actually Lon Chaney's Wolfman nose Yeah, there? that's the one from Abbott wow. and Costello. And how many, yeah. You've got a huge science fiction horror memorabilia collection. Uh, how many pieces do you think? Thank you, guys. Oh, probably way over a thousand, I would wow. say, all together. And then, you know. But these are really pristine. I mean, these are like, well, I mean, if I was going to collect yeah. the Glenn Strange headpiece, and you've got the boots too, right? <laughs> yeah. It didn't yeah. get any any cooler than that. Oh, well, well, the headpiece, well, Glenn gave both of them. He gave me the boots and the headpiece. But the, the secret, maybe, of, of saving rubber, he had it in a just a paper sack in a closet for all these years. And maybe that's the way to keep them. Maybe I don't it know. Is. Forget it. That's, you know, cellophane, forget any kind like of. 1948, and it still looks as good today as it did in 1948. Wow, that's just, something. Just a regular old paper bag. Yep, that's it. That's you could Glenn Strange was your buddy, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He was yeah. like my dad. He was yeah. my adopted dad, and I, I spent more time with him than, almost, well, than my own dad, to tell you the truth. You know, we mentioned home movies earlier. Well, Bob showed a movie that was, um, well, we saw pictures in, in the latest Scary Monsters. Once right. again, not the latest, but the next the latest Scary Monsters right. magazine. Right. Of your home movies that you play Captain America and your Mad Mummy character in. <laughs> yeah. Man, great stuff. Well, a, well, I think that the greatest part there was getting Glenn to play a, a part of the monster, the Frankenstein monster, a guest role in it, and that was pretty cool. That's right. You know, I mean, for a home movie to have Glenn Strange in as the Frankenstein monster, how cool is that? It doesn't yeah. get any better no, than that. You're not going to top that. You're <laughs> no. really not. But you had uh, the, one of the original Captain America uh, yeah. outfits in that, and yeah. the boots and, uh, from a Superman outfit, and yeah. uh, the Wolfman came. Just been lucky, that's all. Yeah. Born at the right era. That's What's your it. favorite piece that you own out of everything oh, gosh, you've got? There's a, there's a couple, actually. I mean, there's a lot of them, but a couple. Right. One would be the King Kong armature, of course. Oh, I, yeah. The last puppet of Kong. She was 18 inches tall in reality. And the time machine, the original time machine. Wow. And that's, that's great. I mean, I, I, I love them all for all different reasons. You know, sure. They're all movie history. Uh -huh. and, and that's what you that you have to save movie history because so much of it's gone. Right. They throw it away, it's scrapped and everything. And there's not much left today. And now with CGI coming, computer graphic stuff, uh, a friend of mine who 
who makes spaceships yeah. joked with me a while back and said, y your next spaceship I give you is going to be on a CD-ROM, and that's probably true. Well, uh, yeah. They won't be making models yeah. anymore, no, and, that's and a that's, shame. it is a shame. I mean, I know it's progress and whatever you want to call it, but the old-fashioned way is still the best way. You know what? I've always said I'd rather have a man in a rubber monster suit any day than a computer-generated oh, monster. Oh, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. agree. But that's what this show has. This show has the essence of all that. And it, it's all people that love monsters is why they're here. Not the blood and gut stuff. None of that. I mean, it's just the old-fashioned universal guys, the wolf man, the monster, you know, the mummy. I mean, it's just, there's a feeling at this show. I've never had it in any other show right. that I've been to. And I've been to a lot of these things, you know. But this has just this, this camaraderie of all the people that are just really cool. Like I saw some of your stuff last night, and, and, and that was as thrilling as I've seen. I mean, oh, wow. here's a horror host back again doing stuff, which is, you know, we need this. We really need it. You know? Bob, I appreciate that. It means a lot. Oh, from well, it, yeah, but it's great. I, I mean, when you had those, those dead cowboy guys come in, I was on the floor. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was on the floor. I mean, because I mean, instead of coming and just attacking you, they're just, they just don't even know where they are. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and that's what made it so and the, funny. And uh, the uh, uh, grape jelly. Oh, album, it, it was you know? beautiful. I Anytime mean, you get a chance to have yeah. a zombie drawing on your show, you've got to go for it. Yeah, I wish I was closer <laughs> to you because I'd love to guest on that oh, show. Shoot, I'd have you on as often as you'd come. Okay. Matter of fact, if you're in the Nashville area, I'll give you all the information. You look me up. I will. I on. will. I'd, I'd love Absolutely. to get I mean, if, if you get a chance, catch this show. It's the best you're going to see now because there's no other guys really doing this. And he did it the old-fashioned way, just like it was in the 60s, man, when you sat there. Well, actually, even in the early 50s so when I saw some of them. Well, I'm I old, just saw you appeared on I'm some of them. in the dirt. So, you now, know. Did, didn't you? Dress as your Mad Mummy character and go on. Yeah, it was Shock Theater back in Texas in yeah. 1959. Yeah, and that was fun. It was I had got to do it, so I, I got to do a little of it. It's, it did you ever do any hosting yourself? Well, I'm sort of the co-host of that show, you yeah. know, and that type of thing. But it, it's it's fun. But uh, but your character's great, and it's it's just a fun show. I mean, I appreciate uh, that, Bob. Uh, I really I, I've got to get a tape of one of your shows. Oh, you, I'm gonna fix you up. Don't that, worry. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. But this this show is this is the greatest ever. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. I appreciate the. So we need to be sure, and I'll be sure and give Ron a shout. But Ron, uh, Ron Adams, the guy that put all this together, oh, and tell him how man. much we all appreciate. I'm telling work. you, that guy, you know, he's he's done every every monster kid a real service. I want to yeah. tell you, because yeah. he's one himself. Next year is all going to be devoted to mad scientists. <laughs> well, you got to be here for sure, then. Uh, you know it. You're about the maddest I've ever seen, <laughs> in a good way, of course. Oh, the yeah. mad, mad, bad, but in a good way. That's there right. you go, exactly. Well, Bob, I appreciate you spending a few minutes. Oh, with me. my pleasure, indeed. Okay, I love it. And you have a good trip back home. I sure will. Okay. And, and uh, hear from you. I've got to get your website, by the way, too. I want to. Oh, I'll do it. Actually, you've got a link up from your website to mine. Oh, that's right, I do. Yeah, I forgot. Sure so yeah. come by and check it out. Oh, we, I'll do we've it. updated since then. So Excellent. I'll do it. it All right. Well, we'll see you guys back in the lab. <laughs> Loved with fierce, demanding passion. A monster who ran wild in a reign of terror that spread murder in his trail. thing that went wrong in the secret atomic laboratory afflicted him with the most hideous curse ever visited on man, forcing him to cower in the darkness like a hunted animal. For one touch of the sun's bright rays transformed him into the reptilian Jekyll and Hyde monstrosity who couldn't control his lust to kill. <coughs> Okay, welcome back. Dr. Gang Green here with Marion and Jim Clatterbaugh, co-publishers of Monsters from the Vault magazine. How you guys doing? Doing great. Having a great time this Real weekend. Real good. Good, good. Now, how long have you guys been publishing Monsters from the Vault? Uh, the first issue premiered in the summer of 1995, so we're going into our seventh year now. That's, that's great. How many episodes, or issues rather, episodes? Yeah, how many, this probably seems like episodes. How many episodes have you uh, published so far? Yeah, we're up to issue number 14. Uh, we've tried to publish two or three times a year now but we all have real jobs of people that work on it during the day so the magazine mainly gets worked on at nights and on weekends so we 
we try for two or three times a year now. So. Right. So it's a co-published deal, but you also have some uh, other publishers that work with you. Is that right? Yes, we do. Yeah, we have uh, Steve Cronenberg is also a co-publisher, and uh, Mike, his brother Mike Cronenberg does a fabulous um, art direction and layout that you see, and um, on behalf of, of them, we'd like to thank everybody for the terrific support. This is a fine publication, and as a matter of fact, it's just even become finer with, through a, a, a really interesting quirk. They're publishing on really nice, slick paper now for this newest issue. Kind of how did that, that work out, Jim? Uh, well, we've been uh, using different printers over the years. You know, you're always looking for the best deal, and through Ted Boas, who does uh, the special effects magazine, he also does Chiller Theater for Kevin, and he hooked us up with a printer that's been doing his issues and also does Scarlet Street and basically they just gave us the best deal and it just so happened that with the new deal we're getting a better product gloss paper with a collar cover for less than we were paying before so wow, glossy glossy interior stock for those nice photos you've got great photos and great layout in the magazine too by the way yeah it's great like I said our director Mike Cronenberg he does a fabulous job on it uh, I met him at one of the conventions Fan X that's held in Baltimore every year and through him we just decided you know we'd like to do a magazine we always wanted to do one, and uh, originally it was just going to be a one-shot. We did the first issue. It was only like 28 pages. We premiered it at a fans convention, but then uh, we got a good response, and then we just built from there. And now right. the new issue is 96 pages, and keep on going strong. So what's some of the articles in the new issue? What, what you got featured this time? Um, I'll let you well, describe okay, uh, we got a, We got some really good uh, TV interviews. What these were were... Uh, back in the 60s, there were some TV shows that people got audio tapes of since there wasn't a VCR or anything back then to get it. So they transcribed these interviews. There's one with Jack Pierce that Bob Burns had had uh, taped on a reel-to-reel uh, -reel wow. when he was on a, a show. There's a uh, Karloff and uh, Lori promoting The Raven when it came out in the 60s, and there's Lon Chaney Jr. when he was on a television show. Uh, there's also a wrap-up of our big article we've had running for several issues on the cinematographers of the horror film, and then Mark Clark rounds it off with an article he wrote on like Forgotten Universals from the 40s that uh, they've never been released on video by Universal. You know, you get bootleg copies here and there, but they've never had the, the real treatment they deserve. So, yeah. and tons of reviews and book reviews, DVD reviews views, letters, and it's just a yeah. good issue all around. Lots of stuff. Any ideas for future issues? You know what you're doing next issue? Yeah, I think the next issue is going to have a uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon cover. Uh, we've been wanting to do that. It's one of my favorite movies. And uh, actually, Steve Cronenberg and Tom Weaver are writing a follow-up to his book from the uh, 80s uh, or from the 90s, uh, Universal Horrors for McFarlane, and we're going to premiere, I think, the chapter on a creature from the Black Lagoon in the next issue. We've got a nice article by Gary Don Rhodes on the horror crisis of 1932. We've got uh, three-parter coming out on horror serials. Uh, just lots of great stuff in the that works and great. stuff. So yeah. Well, we wish you all the luck in the future and keep up the ghoul work. And uh, hey, I ho hope you guys the best from Chiller Cinema for Monsters in the Vault magazine. Oh, well, thanks a lot. It's Thank great you. meeting you here, and I uh, enjoyed seeing your stuff uh, last night up in the old dark clubhouse. And uh, look forward to seeing more of it in the future. And great. Well, thanks, Jim. I appreciate Thank it. Jim, Marion, thanks. thanks a lot. Okay.